Oh, yeah. What we got here is finding limits where some of our answers are going to actually be to positive and negative infinity. So a lot of our teachers are going to expect you to be able to say to what infinity do we approach even if the limit doesn't exist because we're approaching those infinities. So we're going to go over that skill now and figure out how to do it. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of negative 1. So the first thing I always do with a limit before I break it up or factor it is I plug that number directly in. Right? If we've got a nice constant, finite number, then that's the limit. So negative 1 gets plugged in, I get 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So that's 1 and negative 4 is negative 3. Minus 5 is negative 8. All over, let's see, negative 1 squared is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. Ah, so right away what this means is our limit is going to one of the infinities. We don't know which one just yet. What I would recommend us doing is now factoring this out and kind of seeing what side we come from. So why do we go to infinity? Well, because you've got a constant over zero, and that shoots this graph up or down really fast. So we're not going to exist. But to what infinity do we go? So I'm going to factor this thing out. We've got x plus 5 all over x minus 1 divided by 2 times x squared minus 1. And that's going to factor out a little bit nicer still x plus 5 times x minus 1 all over 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, why is that important? Well, we can take these two factors out. And we're going to, of course, keep our limit with us. We don't want to be lazy. Negative 1 from the right. Limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. And if we take a look at this thing, as we approach negative 1 from the right side, what do we get out of this? Well, pick a number from the right side of 1 like 0. Right, so 0 plus 5 over 2 times 0 plus 1. Why is that important? Well, that equals a positive number. So even though we get out a negative 8 over 0, when we approach negative 1 from the right side of negative 1, that would be 0, we see that we get a positive number out. So we're going to infinity, but we're going to the positive infinity. And so that means the limit doesn't exist, and we're going to positive infinity. Now we're going to do the same thing, but from the left side. So we've already done all our factoring. So we've got the limit, same exact function. Like how I designed it that way? I do. So that'd be the limit as x goes to negative 1 from the left of x plus 5, all hova, 2 times x plus 1. Now we're approaching negative 1 from the left side of negative 1. So plug in a number from the left side, like negative 2. So negative 2 plus 5 all over 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Well, that's going to give me a positive 3. And this is going to give me a negative number, right? A negative 2 when you simplify all of that. And that is less than 0. It's negative. So that means the limit is going down to negative infinity. So again, we started out by saying we've got a constant over 0, so we're going to one of the infinities. From the right side, we go to a positive infinity. From the left side, we go to negative. Simple as that. All right, so let's check each of these out now. So we're going to check it out from the side of 1. So it's the same exact function, but now with 1 instead of negative 1. Let's see what happens. Well, again, we factored everything out, right? So we know already that this is the same as the limit as x goes to 1. I thought it'd be cool to do it a couple different ways. As x goes to 1 from the right side of the simplified form, which is x plus 5, over 2 times x plus 1. But again, we're plugging in 1 now into this simplified form. Remember, what happened is this was completely undone. We've yet to plug in positive 1 from the right. So let's see what happens. When I plug in positive 1 from the right, I get 1 plus 5 is 6. I get 2 times 1 plus 1, or 2 times 2 is 4. That simplifies down to 3 halves. So what we have here is we have a limit, and it exists. It's 3 halves. So we got a number over 0 when we plugged in negative 1. We would get 0 over 0 if we plug in positive 1, thanks to the x minus 1s. Ah, so we actually have a limit of 3 halves. We got a hole at x equals 1. So let's see what happens from the left side of 1. Limit as x approaches 1 from the left of, again, the factored form. There's no point in doing the problem again and again. That's 2 times x plus 1. And if I plug in 1, I'm going to get the same number, left or right. Doesn't matter. Of course you're going to get 6 fourths. 
which is 3 halves. We're still plugging in 1. Remember, to try any limit, you should first plug in the value that you're approaching in the x direction. So if the limit actually exists from both sides, the limit exists regardless. Very nice. So these would not be infinite limits. All right, a little bit more, then we'll call it a video. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left. How do we do that? Well, plugging it directly in, we get 3 minus 1 over 0 cubed. So that's going to an infinity, right? We know that. It doesn't exist. But to what infinity are we going to? Again, let's pick a number as directed by our limit. The one-sided limit says from the left. So I'll do 1 over, let's just do negative 1 cubed. And the question is, what's the sign of all this going to be? And that's the infinity we'll go to. This is 3 minus negative 1 cubed is, well, negative. So that'd be 3 minus a negative 1, which is greater than 0. Why is that important? Because even though we know the limits go into infinity, now we know it's going to positive infinity. Interesting. Uh, just a little side note, had we been coming from the right side of 0, this would end up being a positive number. And then we'd be approaching negative infinity. Right? We'd be going down to negative infinity. I'll show you why in a second. Actually, I'll show you why right now. So if we have the limit as x goes to 0 from the right-hand side, well, that would be 3 minus 1 over x cubed, of course. But now let's pick a number, right? a number to the right of 0. So that would be 3 minus. Now this is the thing going to infinity. right? So we ended up with minus a minus, which is a plus in this one. But here we're going to end up with minus. And then if we plug in, I don't know, 1. That's to the right of 0. That ends up right here, this part being greater than 0. And I should be clear here, this part right here ended up being less than 0. That's what was important, not the overall picture of what was greater than 0. So why is that important? Because you essentially now have 3 minus infinity, which goes to negative infinity. Whereas here, I should have said that you have 3 plus infinity, which is why you go to infinity. Okay, now here you've got the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 from the right. Again, let's plug it in, let's see what we get. So that's going to be equal to pi over 2, that quantity squared, ugh, minus 1, all over the tangent of pi over 2. Now what is the tangent of pi over 2? Let's check that out. Well, the tangent of pi over 2 is the same as sine of pi over 2, all over cosine of pi over 2. Okay, now let's think about what this is. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, but you're coming at the cosine of pi over 2 from the greater side. And that matters. Right? You're coming at it from this side of pi over 2. And cosine's negative over there. So what we're eventually going to get here is that, yeah, we're approaching 0, but basically from the left. You end up with a negative infinity down here. So I get pi over 2 squared minus 1 all over negative infinity. Again, that's because we've got a number over 0, so we're going to infinity. But cosine of pi over 2 from the greater side of pi over 2, this side, makes for a negative infinity, sine being positive there. So now I've got a number, some number, not 0, over a giant number. That simplifies down to 0. That's it. I'll see you in the exercises. Nice work.